This screencast will talk about an algorithm to solve the closest pair problem in the plane, r squared. So first, the formal definition of this is given a set of points in the plane, r squared, find the two points that are closest together and their distance. So we'll assume that we're going to use the Euclidean distance, standard thing that you learned in high school. You take the difference between the x-coordinates of the two points and the y and square it, and add it to the difference of the y-coordinates squared, and then take the square root of that. So the input will be endpoints, uh, where we'll denote each point by its x-coordinate and y-coordinate, and the output will be the pair of points with the smallest Euclidean distance between them. This problem has lots of applications. Um, some examples are in computer vision, robotics, and graphics. And also, you should know that it's the algorithms uh, can be generalized to higher dimensional spaces. It gets a little more complex, though, than the approach you need in R squared. So before we get going on the algorithm that we're going to look at in detail, let me just say there's the naive approach, and that is just compare all the pairs. Um, and that's outlined here to have uh, the points go from 1 to n minus 1, and another uh, index for, for pj, a j go from i plus 1 to n, so this would be, so that do the uh, looping like this to keep the points distinct from one another, and then just go through and keep track of the minimum as you go. Obviously this is an n squared, um, and the goal is to try to do significantly better than that. So before we get going on R squared, uh, I'd like you to think it's worthwhile thinking about how you might do this just in uh, on the line in R1. Suppose you're given a set of unordered numbers. Can you find the closest pair faster than N squared? So why don't you pause the video and give that a few minutes thought, see what you can come up with. So here's a solution um, that's relatively straightforward. You just sort the numbers. And once you've sorted the numbers, uh, and that's going to take n log n. Then you can check each pair of consecutive numbers. So you'd have to, all you have to do is look to see which ones are next to one another. And if you do that, um, that's going to be the first sorting is going to be n log n. Checking each pair is going to be just uh, n. And so the overall performance is going to be n log n. And now the question is, can you think of something that might work like this for r squared? So again, I'd pause. Uh, you might I'd th say, can you come up with a divide and conquer approach that might do this and use the fact that you can potentially support uh, sort the points in some way? So here's the idea. Um, let's sort the points by both x and y coordinates. For now, we're just going to worry about the x coordinates. So you get a picture like this. Uh, this is supposed to be the x-axis down here. And you divide the points into two equal subsets by finding the uh, median point. Um, that's easy to do since you've got them sorted by x-coordinates. So they find a median x-coordinate. And so you can think of this is the dividing line, x equal to the median. And then, so you've got points on the right, points on the left. So now if you since we're taking a divide and conquer approach, we'll just apply the algorithm to the points on the right, and we'll get a shortest distance here, and then apply it to the points on the left and get the shortest distance there. So now we're in pretty good shape, except there is an issue. So stop and think about what the issue is and try to give some thought about uh, how you might overcome it. So the issue is what to do about the points that potentially... Uh, might cross this line and might be closer to one another than either DL or D right. So the issue is what to do about points that potentially are cl closer that cross the dividing line. So that's where the conquer part comes in for the divide and conquer. So we're going to look and see how to do that in the next slide. So we're letting it let D be the minimum of D left and D right. And we're going to think of a band around the median. And the band is going to be 2D wide, so it's going to be D on each side. Now if you think about it, any point, pair of points, that's going to be have a distance between them less than the min of D1 and D2 has got to be inside this band. Because if it's outside the band, then the distance just to the median is going to be bigger than D. So 
we only need to worry about the points that cross. Okay, so we're going to have this strip uh, 2D wide, and then we're going to scan the points from top bottom to top, or you could go from top to bottom, but I'll talk about doing from bottom to top. And we'll just check for each point the points above it that were with are within distance d. Now that makes sense if they're fur in terms of the y coordinate. If the in terms of if the y coordinate is bigger, difference is y coordinates is bigger than d, then obviously the distance between the points is going to be bigger than d, and so we don't have to check that point. So we'll, what we'll be doing is we'll basically be checking for say for this point we'll be checking in a rectangle that's 2d wide, and then up d. And in principle, we only need to check on the opposite side. I'm not going to discuss that. Uh, it makes the algorithm a little more complicated. I'm just going to ignore it. But we'll just assume that we're going to check all the points above uh, the given point whose y-coordinate is different by, than by d. So here's some pseudocode for it. Um, and I'll let you, you might want to pause the video and look at some detail, but let me just walk you through it at a high level. If n is uh, less than or equal to 3, then obviously we can just use brute force. We won't worry about that. Um, so then we uh, copy, uh, we have to sort the points, and we've got them in an array P for non-decreasing order of x-coordinate, and array Q for non-decreasing order of y-coordinate. And we'll copy the first half of the points into P left and the second half into P right. Copy the same points from Q into Q left and into Q right. Now, that's pretty easy to do if you stop and think about it because we can decide which things go in Q left by the x-coordinate. If it's less than the median, then it goes in Q left. If it's more than the median, it goes into Q right. So we just walk through Q and put the points into Q left and Q right appropriately. So that's just, this is only going to cost linear time. So um, that's going to be important to know that we can do all this in linear time. All right. Then D left will be equal to the closest pair on P left, Q left. D right, closest pair, Q, P right, Q right, the distance. And we'll let D min be the minimum of those two. Okay, so now we're setting up to, we take the middle coordinate, and we've got d min, so we can get our band just by looking at which points are in the band, just by looking at their x coordinates. So to make life simple, we're going to just copy the points within this 2D band around them into a temporary array that's sorted by the y coordinate. Again, we just do this by looking at the x coordinates. And then we loop over the array for each point p, and we only loop over the points q that are within d min vertically. So in other words, we only look at the difference in the y coordinates between p and q. And then we check to see if the distance is smaller. If it is, then we replace d min with that. So the crucial question here, you can go through what I just talked my way through here. Everything is going to be linear except potentially this, how many points are there vertically potentially vertically less than d min away from the given point p. And what I need to show is that that's a small constant. And then that, then that since we're looping, just looping over p then, and then have, doing a constant number of operations here, then this part of the code will still be linear. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a magnifying glass, and we're going to look at this rectangle for this point. And try to figure out how many points can possibly be in that rectangle. Again, we really only need to check across the median line, but let's not worry about that right now. We'll just If we can show there's only a constant number of points in here, then certainly there's only a constant number of points on the, on the opposite side. So for each rectangle, we're going to divide each rectangle into basically, conceptually, eight little squares. So each one of these little squares is going to be d over 2 wide. Um, so d over 2, d over 2. Well, if you think about that, how what's the greatest distance possible between two points in one of these squares? 
the greatest distance possible would be from that there, one corner to the other corner. And so if we compute that, then the difference in the x-coordinate is going to be d over 2, and the difference in the y-coordinate is going to be d over 2. And if you compute that, using the Pythagorean theorem, uh, what you get is that two points in a small box can be at most d over the square root of 2 apart. So they have to be less than d. What that means is that there can only be one point in there, because if there were two points in there, they'd be closer to each other than d, and they'd be on the same side of the median. So thus there are most seven points that can be compared, uh, that must be compared to uh, each point as the loop goes up. So for each one of these axes, there can be at most seven points in there. In fact, it, uh, you can do a tighter proof where it's fewer points, but we won't worry about it. All we care right now is that it's a constant number of points. So that means that this whole step, as we zoom up, um, is basically going to be big O of n. What, is that, and what does that say? That says that our recurrence relation looks like this. The number of operations is 2 times, because we have to make 2 calls to closest pair, uh, on half the points, plus this extra work that we have to do to take care of the band, the possibility that two points across the band, the median, uh, are closer together. And, but we know that that's in big O of n. So that's just the recurrence relation for merge sort. Or if you uh, want to think about the master theorem, um, it's the master theorem with a equals 2, b equals 2, and d equals 1. And either way, you get the t of n is big, big O of n log n. So that's it. It's a really kind of beautiful um, application of divide and conquer and with a very clever insight into uh, why it's uh, big O of n log n.